Welcome to the Motivation Without the Hype podcast with your host, Jez Perez. He's an author, high-performance coach, and motivational speaker. This show brings you inspiring messages and interviews to unleash your greatness in life and in business. So let's get started. Welcome to Motivation Without the Hype podcast show. My name is Jez Perez, a former procrastinator into an action taker. We bring you inspirational messages and interviews, including motivational insights, tips, principles, and proven strategies that you can take action on without the hype and unleashing your greatness in life and in business. Now, we appreciate you plugging in and spending time with us, and we have a very, very special guest, and I'm super grateful to have him on our show. He is the founder and CEO of at Live Fuel. He is a former walk-on at Berkeley who went on to earn a full scholarship, became a four-year starter, and played in the NFL. Later, as a social entrepreneur, he has leveraged his experience as a professional athlete and professional business career in nutrition to launch and scale Live Fuel from a bootstrap company into a sustainable, thriving business and leader in plant-based nutrition. Guys, I'm so happy to have him on the show. It, it's Guys, you got to check out LifeField.com. It is phenomenal what he's doing, and he is making a difference in the lives of others. Chris, welcome to the show. Jess, thank you so much. That was such an amazing introduction. <laughs> Man, I am super happy to have you. Uh, you know, before going into the show, I've been thinking about this uh, for the last couple of days, I'm, and I'm just eager to, to get you on and, and really just see what you're doing and making a difference in the world through your passion. So please tell us who you are and what you do. Yes, so currently I'm the founder and CEO at Life Fuel. I've been uh, running the business now for about almost eight years. So it's a couple of years just back in business development, product formulation, just trying to figure out what our go-to-market strategy was. Um, and then just been actively working on the business, um, trying to grow it for the past six plus years uh, since we started sp selling commercially. Uh, but other than that, you know, I've been an athlete pretty much my entire life, always took a vested personal interest in health and wellness. Um, obviously, as an athlete, trying to optimize for performance and, and recovery, but more so now just around uh, general health and longevity and mobility and trying to optimize, you know, um, you know, mental health and, and focus and clarity as an entrepreneur and, and productivity and all that fun stuff that um, is applicable now to, to the business world and day-to-day -day life. Um, I do a ton of traveling and actually lived uh, pretty much all over the globe uh, during the past three years. Um, and that's really to try to get closer to you know, the people that are producing the ingredients for our products and just um, a love of soaking up new cultures and really getting to know the, the food and the people um, and how people tick kind of around the world. Wow. Uh, that's why you're super busy, but productive at the same time. So, <laughs> I mean, like hearing what your story is and it, it's amazing journey uh, in life, you know, both in sports and particularly in business that you're running now. Can you share your decisions that made you that has led you into this moment? Yeah, I think uh, a few pivotal decisions for me. Um, you know, thinking back just over life and career, one of the first ones I think was coming out of high school. You know, I played a few different positions as a quarterback, tailback, linebacker, kind of both sides of the ball, all over the football field. But um, coming out of high school, even though I had you know, great accolades, was one of the leading rushers in the county, CIF championships, like you name it, uh, this, the D1 scholarship offers to the big time universities never came my way. Uh, they kind of had me labeled as a tweener and uh, that put me in a really difficult position. You know, I, I had this childhood dream to play at the highest level. Um, my dad had played big time college football at Michigan State and so really wanted to follow in his foot, footsteps to pursue that path for myself. But you know, not having that full ride coming out of um, high school really makes it a lot more uh, difficult and, and makes you, you know, question whether you're good enough to play at that next level um, and just a lot going through your, your mind and, and a really important decision that needs to be made. So I was kind of 
in between whether I should just go to like a junior college for a couple of years and, and try to prove myself um, there and get an offer or kind of give up on the big D1 university and go, you know, to a smaller school or Ivy League or something like that, or to um, walk on to one of these uh, schools that was showing interest in me, but they just didn't have a scholarship to give me. Um, and, you know, I remember, I'll never forget a quote. It was one of my uh, high school coaches. He said, well, you need to make a decision. You, you could either be the little fish in a big pond or the big fish in a little pond. And I was like, oh, well, I want to be the big fish in the big pond. How about that one? You didn't, <laughs> you didn't give me that scenario. And so, um, you know, in spite of what everybody said and, and just like walk-ons never making it, um, you know, I had a great support system around me and, and chose to pursue an opportunity to go to Berkeley. Um, and worst case scenario, I knew I'd get a great education, but, you know, hopefully I could um, show them what I could do on the football field also. And, and that would work out for me. And, you know, it turned out to be one of the best decisions I made. It was not without a ton of struggle. And I wanted to quit every single day. <laughs> I was there my first year, you know, I was undersized. I was thrown into a new position, just get my butt kicked. And, you know, just was was unhappy, but you know, something inside me just said, "Hey, just one more day, just keep going." And sure enough, you know, things slowly started to happen and, and turned my way. And so, for me, that was a pretty pivotal moment in life. You know, a lot of my um, great friendships still to this day came out of those those times um, on the field uh, at Berkeley, and, and just you know, a lot of amazing experiences that obviously led to the next chapter later in life if we go back to back in college and obviously there's been a lot of trials and challenges but what kept you going in terms of that passion of yours and did you have a, a big goal in mind that you work towards on a daily basis like how did you build your habits that led you to going into and achieving your bigger goals what, what, what was that in between Yes. Yeah, so there's a few things that I would remember. I mean, one, you know, that childhood dream that you're still always chasing, right, to play in the NFL, right? So you know that, you know, uh, doing well on the collegiate stage is, you know, a critical part of getting an, an opportunity to go to the, the highest level um, for football. Um, and so I remember, you know, just getting <laughs> beat up, you know, day in and day out. But we would practice on uh, a field that was above the stadium. And each day after, you know, brutal practice, I remember looking down uh, at the empty stadium and just seeing the bleachers and, you know, just trying to take that all in and say, you know, one day if I'm able to run out of that tunnel in front of those fans, be, you know, the guy playing on the field, all this all this is worth it, right? Just for that one moment, just for, you know, that one play. And even at that time, because it was still so early on in my, you know, collegiate career, I didn't even imagine that I would be the guy, be the starter as, as quickly as that happened for me. I was, you know, hoping that by, you know, maybe my sophomore year, I'd get on special teams, maybe junior year, I'd be a little more involved. And then by the senior year, I'd be, you know, one of the guys in the starting position. Uh, but, yeah, just, I guess, that continuous work ethic and, um, you know, commitment to uh, improve my body and, and just kind of showing what I could do both on and off the field ultimately uh, allowed me to seize opportunity when it presented itself. And so we had a brand new coaching staff um, because we were so terrible in my redshirt freshman year. Uh, they basically cleaned house, hired a whole new uh, coaching staff, and that kind of gave everybody a clean slate to show what they could do. And that's really when I got my uh, chance to, to show what I could do. And, um, you know, the coaches like what they saw and, and I had to work my butt off in the, in the off season to put on some pounds. Um, and yeah, I was, I was just on cloud nine when after that freshman summer, the second freshman summer coach pulled me down in his office and say, Hey, we're going to put you on full scholarship and you're going to be the starting fullback for us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, get ready to <laughs> get ready to go against Baylor. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So yeah, it was, it was yeah, I, I was ecstatic. My, my parents were psyched and it was just a, a huge moment in life um, for me. So I like those two words you mentioned and I, and I it kind of resonated with me is work ethic and commitment. And, you know, throughout your life, what spurred you to say, you know what, I want to start different. I want to I look towards 
nutrition. What was that for you when that idea came to your mind and says, you know what, I think I want to do this. I'm going to go all in on that. Can you share that moment? Yeah, so, you know, for me, because it was so integrated, I guess, throughout my, my life um, as an athlete, and, you know, I think we all have this personal relationship with food and nutrition, and that's influenced from, you know, a myriad of different factors, largely uh, societal and familial. Um, and then, you know, for me, that was definitely a part of it, but it was really, I think, later post-football when I was transitioning away from the game um, and trying to really transform my body and my health because I had ballooned up to 240 plus pounds to you know play in the NFL. Um, I didn't feel healthy at that weight. You know, my whole body hurt and based off what I was uh, putting in my body in terms of a lot of you know, animal based protein, whey protein shakes, you know, I just felt um, constantly inflamed. I had a lot of heartburn, just, you know, a lot of undesirable, I guess, health consequences that went along with it. And um, it was really my first time living abroad in Italy that I, I got turned on to um, how contrast like their way of eating and living was to, you know, the standard American diet and lifestyle that we've just come to accept. And it's much less dependent on ultra processed foods. It's more plant based and nutrient rich and, and more localized. And so integrating more of that into my own diet and lifestyle, I saw like radical, you know, physical transformation, but also improved energy levels, more mental clarity, you know, all these other things that you never really think about, you just kind of accept them for what that, you know, I'm just tired, because I worked out hard, or I'm just tired, because, you know, whatever, I didn't, <laughs> didn't sleep great, or whatever, you know, that doesn't necessarily need to be a normal thing. And, and you know, um, I finally got my start in nutrition professionally working for, you know, a global nutraceutical company, um, specifically in the bariatric uh, and metabolic uh, weight loss space. And it was really during that time where I was able to learn from really world-class um, scientists and formulators who start with the science to create, um, you know, a, unique nutritional formulations that really address um, some of the most chronic uh, lifestyle related illnesses and disease uh, that are a direct result of the food that we put in our body or what we, you know, pass off as, as food Was today. That, the spark for you? that kind of says, Oh, wow. Like, cause you mentioned before that we're all used to, you know, the nutritional fad where it's whey, it's all meat processed, but what, kind of got you interested into plant-based nutrition. Now, to those who are listening and watching the podcast show, can you just briefly explain what plant-based nutrition is? Yeah, so I think there's, you know, different definitions of plant-based nutrition. And so I think, you know, I, I'm not, <laughs> it's not up to me to define it, but in my perspective, you know, it, it's plant-centric, right? So like if you're talking about a plant-based diet, it's it starts with plant plant-based whole foods, right? And that is probably the, the biggest distinction between like a vegetarian or a vegan diet, right? People might be vegan for other reasons beyond health reasons, but um, being plant-based whole foods centric, um, that is arguably the healthiest diet on the planet, right? And, and not saying that you have to be 100% plant-based, but, you know, the studies uh, support that the more plant-based foods you consume and, you know, limiting your intake of ultra processed foods, highly refined sugars and oils and industrialized meats, the healthier you're going to be, the better off you're going to be able to mitigate disease. And so looking at the nutrition and supplement industry as a whole, I realized that, you know, it's just as big of a mess as our food system is um, because it's largely rooted in synthetic based chemicals. So a lot of the vitamins and minerals that you find at your GNC or health food store or whatever um, start from the chemical process. They, they might say natural on the, the bottle, but they really take an isolated and reductionist approach to nutrition. And so the um, I guess the, the, the need for supplementation can't be ignored because of how um, uh, our food system has changed so significantly and how uh, how um, much are the quality of the food and the nutrient density of the food has decreased just in the past few decades alone, which makes it 
harder than ever to get everything that we need from food. And if you really dig into the statistics, you'll see that over 95% of Americans are insufficient or deficient in one or more key vitamins and minerals. So the aha moment that I saw is not just in this patient population that was in, you know, um, weight loss surgery and morbidly obese, but really in the, in the larger general population. So anybody that's trying to optimize performance, uh, improve overall health and, you know, um, want to live as good as possible for as long as possible simply yeah you can't ignore nutrition it's really the uh the cornerstone and the foundation for optimal health right you can work out like a maniac you can do you know meditate until <laughs> you know so, so, sunrise to sunset you can do all those things but if you ignore nutrition you're ignoring the the most the largest lever um that we have for health and one of the easiest things I think that we all are empowered to, to change, to see positive outcomes. And so, you know, I, I really felt compelled that a, uh, a more holistic a more comprehensive solution need to be created. One that didn't require popping, you know, a handful of, you know, random supplements every day, not knowing if they're working or not seeing your, yeah, your neon yellow urine and going like, what the heck's working on and realizing that your body's just, yeah, not absorbing any of it. So um, that was really the impetus that kickstarted life fuel, and we wanted to do it in a sustainable way that um, put both personal health and planetary health on on the same uh, pedestal because those two really need to go hand in hand. And I think we we need to be a lot more conscious and mindful about the way that we're fueling our bodies and and what we're investing in in terms of you know, our consumption choices. Love that. I love how you mentioned about investing in ourselves, particularly nutrition. I think it's really important as well that we need to look after our health. Our well-being is really, really key. And, uh, yeah, you could be very wealthy, successful, but if you're not looking after your health, then you're not producing the performance that you require to do your role, your business, or your career. So nutrition does play a massive factor, particularly with supplements that you need to put in the right stuff kind of food into your body. Uh, I know that there are quite a few challenges, but I want to just – just read this out because I love your mission statement, and it says that feel better. Our mission, this is Life Fuel, guys. If you want to head there right now and you're listening and watching this podcast show, it's www.life. So it's l y f e fuel dot com, and uh, I, I love it. Where it says our mission is to inspire and empower change toward a healthier future by producing the most nutrient dense products on the planet, created by nature, rooted in science, and designed for modern lifestyles. So I know that this is your, your baby, this is your, your, your passion, this is everything you live and breathe and you do. However, in starting Live Fuel, there are going to be a lot of challenges. How did you overcome those steps or those challenges along the way in building Live Fuel? And how did Live Fuel came about to say, you know what, I'm going all in, this is it, I'm going to make it happen? Yeah, so I think the the biggest part of that was really starting with the why, and that's why the why in life is why, not I, right? Because that's really where we, we did start it, and life is an acronym for live your fullest every day. And so we really went yeah deep into kind of the mission behind what it is we were trying to create. Um, the name ultimately came later, but <laughs> we were going through like this whole, you know, it's so tough to come up with the branding and everything, but um, yeah, it was really the why behind what we're doing and that, you know, driving mission to really empower people to live their best lives. And also it came as a result of just being so frustrated with the way the food system um, exists today and how many of the, you know, packaged food items on our supermarket shelves are more chemicals than they are, actually real whole foods, right? And so how radically far away we've gotten from, you know, a diet our ancestors would have consumed. And, you know, there's a lot of stuff that we just don't think about that we pass off as real whole foods. So I wanted to bring that back into a format that, you know, basically is what real whole, real food should be, right? It should be nutrient dense. It should be delicious, right? And in today's yeah, and in today's age, it, it, uh, day and age, it does need to be convenient, right? Because, you know, the trend is that, unfortunately, people are not slowing down anytime soon, right? We are extremely time crunched, right? So 
um, how could we create a more complete uh, fuel source without compromising the nutritional te- integrity of the product by dumping a bunch of artificial ingredients or sugar or, you know, just filler type foods into these, these products. And so that process alone took <laughs> quite a long time um, because the plant-based market as a whole was not nearly as uh, advanced as it is today. You know, this is almost 10 years ago when we had gotten started. And so, you know, I tried some of those, there's maybe a handful of companies, you know, on the market and I was going through kind of this personal shift. I saw the power of plant-based foods and the, that it had on, you know, my performance, my physique, you know, everything. But I couldn't wrap my head around, you know, <laughs> drinking some of these products on a daily basis. They were so nasty. They tasted like, I don't know, I'm sure you've t- tried some of the green shakes out there or like some of these these other ones. They taste like dirt, so you know. And so done to, to get that. Oh man. So like our first, yeah. So our first, like I said, like there was back and forth iterations for almost two years before we landed on something that was, um, kind of met our standards. But then even since we launched that, um, initial formulation, we've been iterating and making constant improvements. And so we're, we're in the midst of a pretty significant update to that uh, hero formulation that I've been working on for almost three years now just for for this, you know, and, and it, it's because of, you know, the, the standards, um, you know, everybody says we have high quality ingredients, but the, the length to which we go and we've scoured literally the earth to find the most comprehensive ingredients that are deeply rooted in science uh, and come from the earth or not manipulated and created in a lab is, is pretty challenging to create what we, we have in store. Um, and so, yeah, it's pretty exciting. I got the first, you know, samples just a few weeks ago and it's like, yeah, it's phenomenal. So, <laughs> well, um, yeah, I'm excited, but that's, and that's kind of the approach that we've taken to, you know, I've taken to life in business, right? It's constant uh, growth, you know, it's, it's constant iteration, it's constant learning and, you know, looking for, you know, little micro improvements that you can make in day in and day out, right? For personal growth or business growth or, you know, what have you. And so, you know, nothing's perfect, but just like your willingness and commitment to showing up every single day, you know, that marginal, you know, incremental win over time, you look back and you're like, wow, like, <laughs> that's how I got here, right? It's not, you know, this overnight success thing. It's just, no, I showed up and I, I worked my butt off day in and day out. And I think people need to realize that it's, it's a daily process. It, it takes commitment. And there's so many keywords punchlines that you've mentioned about work ethic, working hard, working your butt off on a daily basis and incremental improvements is important because yes, it's true. It, it does play a huge part to where you want to go in terms of your bigger goals. It's because you've been driven with your why, the blood, sweat and tears through ideation, right through brainstorming, right through implementation. But in between is people don't see that. It's the frustrations, the hard work, the thinking about day in day out is this going to be successful but you overcome those fears and over with your you know these negative thoughts that come through in your mind and you're able to push forward so uh, i wanted to ask you know what are your three key steps that you've learned that you've experienced in both life and business uh that's led you to success to where you are right now and looking back and looking at the key learnings that you've that you've experienced has led you to where you are right now yeah so I, th- I think you know one of them being you know i think we're we all kind of latch on to what's comfortable right what's convenient um you know especially as we start to get a little taste of success right and going in a new direction into the unknown can be quite scary and oftentimes we'll come up with a thousand reasons why we shouldn't do it or, you know, what could go wrong or what have you. But a lot of that, you know, if you really think about it and try to envision, okay, what is the the real likely worst case scenario if I go and I try this and I fail terribly, like what is the 
you know, the absolute worst case. And oftentimes like that real world worst case scenario, one will probably never manifest itself, but two, it's really not quite as bad as you think. Right. And so that's, you know, taken from like the stoic philosophy and, you know, really trying to think up, okay, what is the, the true, truly like the my worst fear and, and being able to, you know, look that in the face and say, okay, you know what, screw it. That's actually not that bad. And it's actually not that likely that that will happen. Um, run the risk analysis, of course, but then, you know, have the, the guts and the courage to say, you know, I, I'm going to, you know, pursue this. And, um, you know, if there's something compelling you to do it, there's a reason why. So really trusting that gut instinct and, and kind of running, running with it. Um, so that's definitely one of them. Um, I would say, uh, embrace the journey and be patient with the process is another one. Um, I think that's a huge one, especially in business. I think it's just, you know, it can be very frustrating and you don't realize often how time, how long things take to build. And, you know, um, it's just a very challenging process and that's true in, in anything that's really worthwhile uh pursuing in life right the, the best things take time to build um and you know just being again resolute and convicted convicted in that belief that what you're building matters and you know you're if not then fine change course and do something that you feel really you know because that's what's going to keep you you going right and um yeah, just having faith and trust that, you know, if you keep showing up day in and day out, that that you know, process and that journey is going to pay off. And, and again, appreciate the journey and not necessarily the destination, because that's where all the growth happens. That's where all the learning happens. That's where, candidly, all the, the fun and excitement happens is in the journey, not necessarily just being at the top of the mountain at the end of it. So and then, yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, the third one. No, I was just going to say, I, I think it's just, again, having a good support system around you, but also trust in, in yourself. Um, so that for me has always been critical, right? As a, as a kid, just having great parents and really supportive of, of, of me. Now, you know, as a husband, my wife, you know, being there as a support system and just having that that true partner in life to, to go through those. And it makes it all the more special, right? And when it does get super tough and you're down in the dumps and you're going, well, what do I do? Do I give up? You know, sometimes it's that other person that's able to pull you up with them and say, no, you know, let's, let's keep going. So I think that's also super important. And yeah, I was going to say, you know, your supporting system and the environment you're in. And I'm glad you said that as point number three, because it is important. Like, yeah, you got your why, you're driven with passion, you know, you're trusting the process and you're embracing the journey. But it's the people that are around you that gives you that extra push to say, you know what, don't give up. You're almost there. It's that type of encouragement and support that gets you to the finish line. And you look back, wow. And it's so true, you know, like if the people that you're around with and the people that are supporting you is, is crucial to your journey, but it's those right type of voices mm -hmm. around your, your network, which is, which is really important. And I'm glad that you, you touched on that, which is so important. Environment too, as you said, right? So home environment or work environment or wherever you're spending a large portion of your time. I think that's it's so huge for in terms of productivity and just overall happiness, because if, if you're not <laughs> happy there where you're spending the majority of your time or if it's not, you know, uh, conditioned to, to be able to get into those deep work moments and have that pure focus and concentration, um, you know, that's going to drag you down and it makes it that much more challenging. So having, you know, both that support system around you in terms of, you know, friends, family, whoever you're choosing to spend time with, but also the, the locales and the places that, um, you know, if you can change it. And then oftentimes, like when we've, when I've gone down that, that journey, like sometimes I feel, I'll feel like a place isn't serving me. I'm not growing anymore. And so it's time to, to change it, right. Change your environment. So I think those can uh, help break through a plateau and, and just are super important for day-to-day -day, um, wellness and productivity. I love it. To change your plateau, you got to change your environment. Love that. 
Um, so I yeah. actually, <laughs> that's awesome. So I'm going to use that quote. Mate. No, I'm going to use that nice. quote. <laughs> sure. uh, but look, uh, I always ask this question to every guest that's on the show. What is your meaning of motivation without the hype and how to use motivation for your personal success? Yeah, so motivation without the hype, I think, has become increasingly challenging in, in the world we're in today, right? Because it's so easy to go on social media and, and just you feel like everybody's crushing it, right? And I think you have no clue oftentimes, um, you know, what's going on behind the scenes in that person's life and in their business, right? So I think motivation without the hype is being able to step out of that environment use it you know for for whatever it's worth if it fuels you then then that's great but really uh being able to get back to work get back to what it is you're creating you're building without you know i guess the um the the motivation for trying to do it because of how other people are going to perceive it or how big you can broadcast it or, or something like that. So like less artificial means, less vanity metrics, and really about like the brass tacks and the core principles about why you're doing what you're doing and the impact that has on your own life and, and the lives of others. Uh, I'm, I'm blown away. Chris, thank you so much for adding so much insights, values, and just your heart. And I can see the blood, sweat, and tears that's surrounded with life fuel. And I know just hearing it, I can't wait to actually taste the products and actually purchase them myself as well. But just honest truth about your mission and you're living it, you're breathing it. And, you know, it, it comes through your heart, right through implementation. And right now we can see the fruition coming to life. And uh, thank you so much for that. It's been a huge privilege. Guys, for more information on how you can get in touch with Chris, and his awesome company, Live Fuel, so L Y F E Fuel.com. Please do show some support. Uh, support him as well by following um, all social media links. It's all provided in the show notes. So please get in touch with Chris as well. It's And check out the mission statement, the products, the website. It is world class. So check it out. Please do. And follow me on the provider links on the show notes. So if this episode has been helpful and uplifting, we would love for you to write a review to inspire more listeners to get plugged in. We will continue to provide high-value content in each and every episode. If you don't mind sharing this podcast show on social media by inviting others, it would mean the world to me. Every time you tag me, we will get the opportunity to share those posts. And together, we can make a difference in the lives of others through inspirational episodes just like this. So there you have it. In closing... Continue to unleash your greatness and tell yourself that I can, I will, and I must, and we'll see you on the next episode.